Hey, welcome back to Foundations of Web Design. I'm Thomas Mashad, and in this video, we're gonna talk about description lists. And this example is gonna be found back in the chapter two text document file that I have for you to download. It's in the description just below this video. So you click on that, download it, uncompress it, and you'll have this folder. And in this example, we're gonna be using the description lists .html document that will open up into our text editor. Okay, here we have our description list open in Komodo edit. And one thing that I wanna make sure that you understand when I talk about description lists, it's often referred to as definition lists as well. That's something that's a, an older term uh, that's been used for a number of years. And just recently, the World Wide Web Consortium has switched the term description or definition to description lists. And either way that you use it, it's really defining or describing a list. So it's a little bit different than your unordered lists and your list items uh, that we just looked at in the previous video. This time what we're able to do is we're actually able to, in our list, to define like a title as well as a description. So it's kind of like utilizing a heading element as well as paragraphs inside of a list. And this is how it works. In our first, first example, let's just look at a basic example of a de uh, description list here. And sometimes you're gonna hear me call it a definition list simply because for years that's what I called it. Uh, the, uh, the definition list or the description list tag starts out with a DL uh, tag, opening DL tag. And then after the content, we have the closing DL tag. So our definition or description list, and I'm gonna keep calling it definition list probably for this entire video now that I've said that. Uh, the first thing that we have right after the opening uh, DL tag is our term or our title. And in this particular instance, we're gonna be talking about the topic of cat. So we'll put a definition or description topic title whatever you want to call it uh opening tag and then a closing uh, description tag so description title is the cat and then what we want is the description uh, the definition description and so we have what are called the dd element uh, so we open that up with an opening dd element and we are at a tag and we'll close that so a definition for a cat might be a pet for catching rats and mice we have a cat we you know love having to catch the mice as we live out kind of like in the country area so it's certainly helpful um, another alternative definition of a cat would be a malicious woman so it's kind of like a um, you know we're defining different ways that people mean when they say, oh, she's such a cat or she's so catty or something like that. So it's, uh, that's another, you know, kind of like a slang term so that we can put that in there. Another type of slang term could be a cat means a player or a devotee of jazz music. So that's another type of de definition description. So a title or a topic can have multiple types of definitions. So that's one of the things that I really love about uh, definition lists. It's kind of like uh, you'd use it if you were, you know, defining something from a dictionary, okay? So that's one basic example of a definition list. You can have one topic with multiple definitions. And so you could do that for like frog, something that's wet, uh, a green thing, anything like that. So. Uh, hopefully you can start to see some of the possibilities of a definition or a description list. Another thing that we can do um, is to have multiple topics or titles. And so I'll open this with a definition list uh, tag. And then I'll, after my content here, I am going to close that definition list. So we have two topics here. We have color that has the English, the United States English version, the American English version, and the you have the British spelling of color. So we can open up DT tag, close the DT tag, and another title could be color. So we'll 
open that with a tag and we'll close that as well. And then the thing is, is that while it is the same word, essentially it's the same word, just different spellings, it has the same definition description. So we'll add in the DD element surrounding that. All right, so we can have multiple titles for a similar description. We can have multiple descriptions for one title. The other thing that we can do with a description list, and there are many, many more things that you can do, and I'm going to give you a couple of resources. I'll take a, you know, we'll look at this together, but down in the des uh, description for this video, I'm going to add in some additional resources for further explanation of description lists, or as the titles of the articles say, uh, definition list. You could define when a game is going to be played. Say like we're going to have a definition list of when we have an upcoming game for the men's varsity basketball team at our college or something like that. So the title is going to be the men's basketball game. We could do this for the men's basketball team. We could do it for the women's basketball team. Uh, we could do it for the varsity. We could do it for the junior varsity. As long as we have some type of a title here. And what are we going to say about it? We're going to have the location. So we're defining the location, which is going to be at Johnson Gym. So here on campus, we have a gym where they play the basketball game at, and it's called Johnson Gym. And what's the date? Maybe it's going to be October 15th. Okay, so we'll put in that. And that actually might be before the start of the actual season. I just picked a date randomly. And we could probably put that as November or December. Probably be a little bit more accurate. So we have the date. We also have the time that we're defining. So all of this is just we're defining, you know, what our title is. Uh, where's the location? What What's the date? What's the time? As well as a description of, you know, who are they going to play? So we could have a definition description there. Now, the other thing that's really interesting about definition descriptions that you'll see in the resources that I'm going to provide for you is that this is really kind of like a paragraph uh, describing what's going to be going on. So we can actually place other block level elements inside of the definition description. We could actually have a list of items such as, you know, when is all of this going to take place? Johnson Gymnasium, October 15th, 2013, at the time of 6.30. We could actually have made that into a list, actually. So I could have had my definition description here of Johnson Gym followed by the date as well as the time and made all of these into list items. So they could be list items. So let me just switch those over to list items and I'll just transform these really quick like so, copy and paste. And so then we could actually have list items within a description because this is all kind of dealing with the same thing as far as like the, uh, the location, the date and the time. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. I'm going to do a Command S or a Control S on the PC or Linux. And let's open this up in, uh, say, uh, we'll, we'll open up in Google Chrome. And we'll click on Preview. And we'll see what this looks like. So notice that the, the title is kept to the left, but the description, much like the list items for an unordered list or an ordered list, are shifted to the right. So they have some margin over here on the right. And we can end up with CSS styling uh, these titles and descriptions uh, in some really unique ways. So notice that color and color of the English, the, United, the American version, as well as the British version uh, are kept over to the left because those are both titles and then the description. Now, here's another interesting thing is, is that we have the title for the men's basketball team or the men's basketball game, but the unordered list, even though it's within a description list, doesn't move any further than what the description list is. So it doesn't put any additional uh, margin over onto the left-hand side. And uh, But one of the things I want you to notice is that after this unordered list ends and the description list and so forth, that when we start a new description with a paragraph, that there's actually space after that unordered list. We actually have created space where these description lists that are all together, description list number one, number two, and number three, there is no space in between those, but because we placed a block level element, 
within that description list, it added <clears throat> that spacing after that unordered list. So uh, I wanted to talk to you really briefly or, or, or show you some additional resources that I have for you down in the description. One of the great articles that I have loved ever since it was first written back in, in 2004, Definition List Misused or Misunderstood by Russ Weekly over at Max Designs has some great illustrations of how a definition list can be used. And so uh, that'll be described for you down below or linked for you down below. Like I said, this was done back in 2004, but it's still relevant today. And then in 2007, Chris Coyer over at css-tricks.com um, also talks about the under, underused but semantically awesome definition list. So uh, another great example of what you could end up doing, adding in images, background images, uh, lots and lots of stuff that you can end up doing with these lists. They're really, really fantastic. Uh, so th that'll be down in the resources for you uh, below this video. Uh, play around with description lists, definition lists, however you want to call them, and notice their power and really start to use lists in a different way other than even ordered and unordered list. If you have any questions or comments, please place them below or check out the website foundationsofwebdesign.com.